We're up an average 60% on our 39 penny stocks recommended over the last 18 months with a 460% return on Ceres Therapeutics. But not all penny stocks on our list have gone our way. So in this video, I wanna look at the five on our list below that initial price, what went wrong and why I'm still buying. We're talking investing in penny stocks today on Let's Talk Money. Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with the Let's Talk Money channel. I wanna send a special shout out to all you out there in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. Nation, penny stock investing can be tough. Sometimes I think it should come with a warning. Do not invest in penny stocks if you have a weak heart or are at risk of heart problems. Investing in these kinds of small startup type companies brings with it a lot of risk, along with those potential returns of five and 10 times your money and there are gonna be times that you're wrong on an investment. Willamette University did a study of over 3,000 angel investments. That's the same kind of small cap startup investing that we're talking about with penny stocks and found that 55% of those investments returned less than the original investment. That's the bar on the left here at less than 1x return. These are savvy, big money investors and still half of their startups lost money but they had enough of those rocket investments, enough on the right side of the chart here that returned 10, 20, and even 30 or more times their money that the portfolios made a 2.6 times return over a three year period. So when I started tracking the penny stock recommendations on the channel, I fully expected to see those big wins offset by some of those stocks falling into the red. Stocks like Elevate Credit, ticker ELVT, that was down as much as 76% from our December video before recovering, but is still down 22% over the last year. And this is why you have got to have a strategy for investing in penny stocks. You need that conviction of your research to stick with your stocks that you know can do well, and you need to build a portfolio of at least 10 to 15 names. In this video, I'll show you that process for finding penny stocks that I use, how to narrow your list, then reveal five stocks with prices under my initial recommendation that I'm still buying. Now to start your search, you can use a simple stock screener on market cap and share price. Now I usually use the screener on Weeble here, but, but you can use any platform you like. I like to search for companies under $500 million market cap to really find those small stocks with that growth potential that we want. If you want, you can also narrow it down by share price for stocks under one or maybe even $5 each. Now, a lot of that initial screening that you do is just gonna to be to narrow your list to less than a few dozen stocks to research. There are more than 6,900 companies under a billion dollar market cap trading in the US exchanges alone and more than 4,000 of those with share prices under $5 each. So anything you can do to narrow that list down a little bit is gonna save you a lot of time. But now it's the research to find those best opportunities that's really gonna drive your return. So I wanna highlight a few things to watch for and then we'll get to that list of penny stocks that I'm still watching. First here is you wanna look for companies with a disruptive advantage, some competitive advantage that they can use to take market share from their competitors. These companies, they're not coming into virgin markets. Their products are gonna to have to compete with established brands. So, so there needs to be a reason for customers to switch. Next, I look for an address market in the billions of dollars. Now, this is just an estimate for the annual sales of a company's product, either on a global basis or just in a specific sales area. And you can usually find this from a company's investor presentation or its annual statement. And now the reason why you wanna see those total annual sales for the entire product category in the billions of dollars is, is because you wanna know that even if that penny stock company can only get one or maybe 2% of the market sales, that's gonna be enough to multiply its current sales and a 10X on the stock price. And finally here, I just take a quick look at the balance sheet to make sure the company has enough cash and funding available for at least the next year's plans and, and not so much debt that it's gonna reduce its financial flexibility. And we'll get to those five penny stocks to double down next, but just to review our penny stock list here, we've been tracking 39 of those small cap companies since December, 2019. We've got an average return here of 60% so far with 10 of the stocks more than doubling in price and Sarah's Therapeutics posting almost a 500% return. In fact, most of the negative returns on the list are those recent recommendations that have just gotten caught in that sell-off of the high growth theme over the last couple of months. Our first penny stock from the list, Nex Innovations, ticker NEXNF in the US market and NEXE in Canada, has really come down a lot since our February 3rd video, but could also have the most upside. The company is a $135 million newly commercialized maker of biodegradable coffee pods. And while coffee pods might not sound like a growth market, coffee consumption is at $102 billion in sales a year. And the single use capsule industry is a 50 plus billion units annual market expected to reach nearly $30 billion in sales by 2025. Shares of Next were up 74% shortly after our video, but got caught in that February growth stock sell-off 
but it has nothing to do with the company and the growth is still there. The company launched its first product under the Zoma Superfoods in February, the first in a series of launch this year and next. Zoma Superfoods is the company's in-house brand to launch its products online and through a direct-to-consumer subscription service. Another catalyst for the shares here, the company is using the same biodegradable technology from its pods to create a compostable, disposable face mask that opens up to the $70 billion market for masks, effectively tripling its addressable market from the pods. Now, besides those catalysts, I really like this on that trend to ESG investing, which according to Deloitte Insights, assets into stocks and investments in the theme could grow to three times as fast as non-ESG assets and make up half the managed assets in the US by 2025. That's more than $34 trillion in managed assets flowing into those ESG investments and related stocks. The market is there. The US at-home market for coffee pods is a $15.6 billion opportunity and growing at 5% a year. And Next Innovations is just adding that ESG component to disrupt the industry. Traditional coffee pods can take up to 500 years to decompose, and even those soft bottom pods can take two years and cause plant toxicity. Next pods are designed to completely decompose in less than 35 days with no toxicity. The company recently announced its completed financing through an $8.5 million warrant program and $14.2 million in financing last December. Next is now fully funded on its projected capital costs for the next 12 months to scale that manufacturing. The company did have its IPO in January, so there's not a lot of financial data yet, but put that funding per and production in place to reach 220 million pods by the end of the year it's definitely one to check out. So I'll leave a link to the investor presentation in the video description below. Shares of Insego, ticker INSG, are only down about half a percent since my November recommendation, which isn't bad, but far underperforming the overall penny stock portfolio. The company is a leader in device to cloud networking, hardware and software to enable broader 5G coverage faster data speeds, and lower latency, which over the next three to five years, as 5G adoption improves and the Internet of Things revolution builds, I don't know if there's a better industry to be in. Management is estimating a $42 billion services and enterprise market, and for a company booking just $313 million in annual sales right now, even a fraction of that would make this a 10x stock return. Shares were up as much as 135% over the two months into January before that tech stock sell-off, so I think the market sees the potential here, even if we have to wait just a little bit longer. Shares are back to just three times on a price-to-sales basis, so not expensive here for a fast-growing penny stock, and the balance sheet is solid with $40 million in cash against no debt. And here we could be looking at a big catalyst for revenue growth in a global expansion campaign. And the company is investing right now to grow its international sales and marketing, as well as newly launched second generation of 5G products. Elevate Credit, ticker ELVT, is another stock where we had gains before that March sell-off, now down about 20% from the December 2019 recommendation. Elevate provides online credit through installment loans, lines of credit, and credit cards available in 35 states, and has a strong position in that fintech space as banking and credit evolves online. Now, the biggest factor in the stock's weakness here, really the business model, has been the fall in demand for loans over the past year. Google Trends here shows the search demand for installment loans, and this is a five-year chart. With all that money being sent out through government stimulus and lockdowns consumers have nothing to buy anyway, people just really haven't needed those loans like they have in the past. You see that search demand touched a five-year low in April of last year and again in March of this year. But now knowing consumers, a lot of that excess household savings that we've been talking about on the channel, that's gonna be spent this year and people are gonna be back to their old habits by Christmas with Elevate expecting loan originations up this year by 10 to 15%. Besides that strong position in FinTech, one of the big reasons I like Elevate here is it's one of the few penny stocks already profitable. The company booked $55 million in net income last year and is trading at just 0.23 times on a price to sales basis. Better still is it was able to improve the net margin last year to 11.8% from just 4% in 2019, that income profitability, and now it's ready to apply that higher profit margin to higher revenue this year. The balance sheet is a little weaker here with $200 million in cash against $450 million in debt, but this is a cash flowing company, so I'm not quite as concerned here as I would be maybe a typical cash burn penny stock. Remark Holdings, ticker MARK, is a $204 million leader in AI solutions for business applications. And that artificial intelligence theme is one of the biggest in the ARC Big Ideas report that we've been following here on the channel. 
ARK estimates the market cap for AI companies could grow to $30 trillion over the next 16 years at a 17% annual growth and contribute more than the internet and IT companies combined. The company makes AI software and solutions in retail, smart city, and workplace safety with some real cutting edge ideas here. For example, in retail, the software produces real-time customer analytics that can actually analyze a customer's path through the store, combine it with prior data, and then use that to guide marketing in-store decisions. The company won a master contract to transform all 18,000 China mobile stores into smart stores, and its biosafety solutions is being used in pandemic response with thermal imaging that can monitor the health of students real-time in the class. The company could see huge growth in any of these segments, but over the next few years, that push for smart cities could really drive it forward, being able to analyze road traffic, crime, and urban planning. Shares are down 14% since the recommendation last month and still trading at 20 times sales, so a little bit pricey here, but still a good industry to be in for that growth. Next Tech AR Solutions, ticker NEXCF, is also down 17% from our March video, but a strong play in that AR VR theme. Next Tech is positioning itself as a first mover in AR applications and in some key markets for virtual conferences, e-commerce, and advertising. Grandview Research estimates the market for virtual conferences alone could reach over $400 billion by 2027, and Next Tech offers an advanced augmented reality experience with a built-in translation AI for 64 languages. The company also has an e-commerce AR platform for an end-to-end -end solution for online shopping and an ad platform that creates 3D assets into AR ads. Next Tech booked 235% revenue growth last year to $20 million and is guiding to more than double that for $50 million this year on the launch of its 3D ad network. So now even on those trailing sales, the shares are priced at just 10 times revenue, but hit that sales target and it's four times forward sales, unheard of in these big theme types of growth stocks. Click on the video to the right for the seven penny stocks that pay dividends, penny stocks that actually pay you while you hold the shares. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.